Scientists say that if the world keeps warming up, the rivers of water vapor that sometimes flow in Earth's atmosphere will become more frequent and cause more extreme flooding. Here are the details. Researchers from the University of Tsukuba in Japan were surprised by the unusual extreme rainfall over Asia in the July months of 2018 and 2020, so they created climate models to study the impact of a warming global climate on rainfall patterns in Asia. In the research paper published recently in the American Geophysical Union's journal, the scientists say they found that if the global average temperature rises by 4 degrees Celsius, the global weather system will create more atmospheric rivers over Asia, Europe, and North America. Atmospheric rivers are narrow bands of very wet air that sometimes form in the atmosphere and tend to flow in a way similar to rivers on land. When these atmospheric rivers hit a barrier, like a mountain range, they can dump very large amounts of rain or snowfall very quickly over the area, causing extreme flooding. The researchers say a warming planet will create more of these airborne moisture streams, which would in turn cause more frequent and more extreme flooding in mountainous areas. The researchers say that while their study focused on East Asia, the model also predicts such atmospheric rivers to increasingly affect mountainous areas in mid latitude regions like Europe and North America. Scientists say global warming is pushing hurricanes and typhoons further north, and New York, Boston, Beijing, and Tokyo will start to experience these extreme storms over the next few decades. Here are the details. The BBC reports that a new study in the journal Nature Geoscience argues that if the planet's average temperature keeps rising, hurricanes and typhoons will start to move farther northward and southward, entering the world's most populated areas. This means that cities like New York, Boston, Beijing, and Tokyo would eventually start to experience these extreme storms on a regular basis. Researchers say the reason for this is because global warming will eventually decrease the temperature difference between the cold polar regions and the hot tropical regions. It is this temperature difference that forms Earth's jet streams, which are high altitude currents of fast moving air that separate the two systems and keep cyclones close to the tropics. Scientists predict that global warming will cause this crucial temperature difference to decrease and thereby reduce jet stream activity, and perhaps even cause the jet streams to fade away. This effect would cause cyclones to push farther north than ever before, slamming into big cities in the northern hemisphere. The BBC says the study's authors argue that this devastating course is not set in stone, and that dramatic reductions in carbon emissions, especially over the next decade, could save Earth's jet streams from fading away. Scientists found that Earth's northernmost jet stream is in trouble. They say that if this weather controlling air current migrates northward, the US and Europe are in for centuries of nasty weather. Here are the details. In a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Scientists warn that the planet's northernmost wind channel, called the North Atlantic Jet Stream, will start migrating northward if the Earth keeps warming up. This would impact North America and Europe in the form of more severe flooding, droughts, and heat waves. The jet stream is a band of fast moving air that is created by the difference in pressure between cold Arctic air and warmer air to the south. It is also known for giving airliner jets a time saving boost when they travel from the US to Europe. The study's researchers bored deep holes in the Greenland ice sheet and looked at the way snow layers had been deposited over the last 1,250 years. From this, they calculated the past positions and intensity of the powerful air current. They say that while the current fluctuations in the jet stream's position and intensity are still within historic bounds, their calculations indicate that the weather controlling air current would migrate northward by 2060 if greenhouse emissions continue at the current pace. The study found that in 1374, the jet stream moved northward and caused a drought and famine in Spain and Portugal. When the jet stream's wind intensity decreased by 50% in 1728 and 1740, it led to cooler temperatures and less rain, causing famines in Ireland and Britain. The recent heat wave in the states of Oregon and Washington caused a lot of damage to roadways. In one post on Twitter, a user based in Portland shared photos of a nearby road and said their house began to shake as the road's concrete started to split. The user wrote, The house started to shake and we thought it was an earthquake, but no, the road was so hot it literally buckled. Here's how it happened. 
Newsweek reports that roads are buckling and breaking apart from the unprecedented hot weather that's been hitting the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. In the usually cool Portland, temperatures soar to 47 degrees Celsius on Monday, June 28th. Scientists say the problem is that Oregon's roadways were not designed to survive such heat. These roadways are made of concrete slabs that contract in cold weather and expand in hot weather. The slabs were shaped with gaps between them, and these gaps are there to create room for the concrete when it expands. However, these gaps are only big enough to make room for the kind of expansion that happens during normal temperature highs, and the recent heat wave created temperatures so high that the concrete slabs expanded so much that they pushed against each other, causing the slabs to break and buckle. Roads that were made of asphalt, on the other hand, often became so hot that they became soft like toffee, and thus became deformed by large numbers of heavy vehicles driving over them. Meanwhile, workers ventured out last week in the blistering heat to put cracked concrete and asphalt roadways back together. Steel drawbridges were doused with water to make sure they wouldn't swell shut under the oppressive heat. North of the border, a weather station in Lytton, British Columbia, notched the highest temperature in Canada's recorded history, a mind-melting 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.6 degrees Celsius. Soon after that, the town was destroyed by a wildfire. Almost two months after the beginning of spring, record-breaking winter weather returned to America with a vengeance. With New York City seeing traces of snow on May 9th, tying a record for the city's latest snowfall. Blame the polar vortex. The polar vortex dumped snow and cold Arctic air on parts of the Northeast United States and Canada over Mother's Day weekend. The polar vortex is a band of low-pressure Arctic air normally centered around the North Pole. It is located in the middle and upper tropospheres and extends into the stratosphere. The polar vortex is usually held in place by a current called the jet stream. Disturbances in the jet stream can push frigid, wintry air to parts of Canada and the U.S., while high-pressure systems of warmer air bulge northwards elsewhere. On Mother's Day weekend, the wobbly polar vortex dumped freezing temperatures on parts of the Midwest and eastern U.S., with springtime snow falling in parts of New York and New Jersey. What's your favorite part of summer? Hanging out at the beach with all your friends? Playing frisbee with all your friends? How about the killer heat waves that have come to destroy us all? If you went for option number two, the US right now has almost certainly been the place to be for the past few days. Here's what you need to know. A severe heat wave affecting 40 million Americans has seen temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit beat records in Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California, according to NBC News. It has two main causes, according to the Associated Press. First, a heat dome, or area of high pressure. Sinking air from the Earth's atmosphere prevents air near the ground from rising. That sinking air operates like a cap, trapping warm ground air in place, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Without rising air, there is also no rain, and nothing to stop hot air from becoming hotter. That high pressure works in combination with a two-decade dry spell that has sucked moisture out of soil in much of the western United States. Usually, some of the sun's heat evaporates moisture in the soil, but according to the Associated Press, scientists say the western soil is now so dry that the energy is instead used to make the air even warmer. As a consequence of the extreme heat, at least 14 new wildfires broke out this week in Montana and Wyoming alone. Firefighters also fought fires in Arizona and New Mexico, with U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Gina Palma saying these were certainly conditions that we would not normally see in June. Power networks across the country have also been strained due to increased use of air conditioning, according to Reuters. Operators in California asked homeowners across the state to conserve energy in the late afternoon and evening when demand surges. In graphs published on its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency showed that heat waves like this are almost three times as frequent as they were in the 1960s, increasing steadily for over 60 years. Furthermore, the duration of these heat waves is now almost a full day longer. What we are watching here is climate change, and at least part of it is man-made, according to the Associated Press. A study published last year in the journal Science found that man-made climate change tied to greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for around half of the historic drought that caused the drying out of the soil. 
Added to this, NASA's website helpfully explains that human activities, such as burning fuel to power factories, cars, and buses, cause the atmosphere to trap more heat than it used to, which increases the Earth's average temperature. Now, of course, heat waves have always occurred. The American Meteorological Society simply defines a heat wave as a period of abnormally and uncomfortably hot and usually humid weather, which we all know was hardly unheard of before. But the point is this, if the Earth's overall average temperature is higher, existing factors like heat domes can more readily push us over into extreme heat, particularly as some defenses against that heat, like the moisture in the soil, are also taken away. Hence, you know, America keeps doing that whole thing where it sets on fire a lot, which it didn't really seem to do as often before. The consequences of all this are not just great action shots of massive fires on TV either. Reuters interviewed one Phoenix resident who described the situation in the U.S. right now as feeling somewhat apocalyptic, and they had a point. According to the WHO, more than 166,000 people in the world died due to extreme temperatures between 1998 and 2017. What's more, between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year from malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. The only response to this that is anything less than a collective death wish is a rapid reduction in fossil fuel use. Production of coal, oil, and gas must fall by 6% year-on-year until 2030 to keep global heating under the 1.5 degrees Celsius target agreed in the Paris Accord, according to one UN report. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.